This program contains adult content. Is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true. That religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody. It's not human intelligence. If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Welcome back, Rebels. This is episode 161. I am your bearded host, Dan. And Ryan's here. Yay! And we are once again joined by the fabulous Purple Dragon, Mr. Grant Larimer. Yay! <laughs> because Matt was suddenly struck ill. It or, has, or was he? It has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the latest episode of the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast. <laughs> nothing at all to do with that. He is not taking... A break for mental health reasons. Okay. He's, he was feeling ill and unable to make it this evening. Feeling ill in the gut or the brain? Nothing at all to do with the two skeptical chaps. Oh, oh. show, Ryan. He's okay. Not, <laughs> he's not flying to Britain to spy on them or do counterintelligence. He's not okay. planning to tie Daniel Morris to a chair and beat him senseless. And drop him in the Thames. No. None of that is happening. I heard he left with a whole bunch of sewing needles, like the kind that fit perfectly underneath your fingernails. No, that's just because he has holes in his pants. Ah, <laughs> and he loses needles easily. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So he does need a new and pair of pants. And he gets slivers. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he may need some plastic pants. He may pants. need some see-through <laughs> pants. If you are as unaware. As long as there are holes in them, I mean. <laughs> if you're unaware of what we're talking about, you should go. And check out the latest Two episode of Two Skeptical Chaps, episode number 55, The Cafefe Effect and Rumps for Trump. <laughs> and I think that's all I have to say about that for now. We'll wait for Matt okay, on the next show to talk about that more. But his absence tonight has nothing at all to do with the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast. Ryan. <laughs> the... the- the motion <laughs> my my one recommendation to, my one recommendation to them is that if you if you're going to get matt on your side you don't approach it from saying how do we get matt to behave <laughs> okay so, cuz that's that's not going to rub matt the right way you know the right way to rub Matt? I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, it just, it's not going to go over well with him. Mm. So, this is probably true. Probably. I would say, like, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. <laughs> tonight is, what is tonight? Tonight is June 22nd, yeah. Thursday. This is episode 161. We have no guest lined up this evening. Uh, we were just going to fill you in on a bunch of news stories and what's been going on for the past couple of weeks. We did not have a show last week and I decided not to do a replay of a previous episode or anything. Not necessarily just because I didn't want to or didn't think that was a good idea, but because I was just busy time out of town. Yeah. Went to California to see Tracy's brother graduate from UC Irvine. Well, not to see him graduate cause I didn't attend the actual thing. Cause Fuck that, they're boring. <laughs> oh, shit. But they're to celebrate. The, the yeah. whole family went down there, rented a nice big house in uh, Anaheim with a pool and a hot tub and pool table and lots of bedrooms and a nice outdoor area that we hung out in and got drunk a lot and just had a good time. It was a nice relaxing weekend for the most part yeah. while we were there. The drive there and the drive back was not terrific. It was fantastic. Fucking people don't know how to fucking drive, man. <laughs> like, get out of the left-hand fucking lane if you're not, not doing... Passing. Yeah, if you're not passing people, get out of that fucking lane. But I'm going the speed limit. Now. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. And then, yeah, so then having to pass people on the ride all the time and, you know, and they're just completely fucking oblivious. Like, they're the only person yeah. on the road. Like, I, you know, 
you go past them on the right and you turn and look at them and want to give them a nasty look and you're hoping to make eye contact and they're just do 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 do. I'm on the road. That's, I mean, that's why we can't have really high or unlimited speed limits here. Americans don't have the common sense or courtesy or respect for other drivers. No. Oh, yeah. To, they they to think be they're able the to, only ones on the road or they're I, the only ones who matter. I lived in Germany for three years and, and the Audubon is fucking amazing. <laughs> but you, you have fucking respect for people on the Audubon. Yeah. When you're going 120, 130 down, down the road and you have sports cars passing you, mm. you've got to have some yeah. fucking respect. Yeah. And, and their, their accident rates are lower than in the U.S. Because they they have a culture of fucking respect on the road, which which we don't. No, not at all. It yeah, it, it was driving me fucking nuts. Luckily, you know most of the areas have. I don't know. It's kind of weird in California. They have instead of telling people to stay out of the left hand lane so much. I mean, there there were signs reminding people that they should be doing that. Yeah. But what I saw more often was that they have. Lanes designated for slow moving vehicles and for semis. Hmm. Like there are sections of road where it says that, you know, anything with more than two axles cannot leave the right hand lane. Yeah. Which we don't have here. I don't know if that, that would well, probably be helpful, but technically they're not vehicles with two axles that are not supposed to drive in the left lane here in Utah, but they do all the fucking with time. more than, yeah. 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 <laughs> semis fucking... carrying three fucking trailers driving the left fucking lane at 60 miles an hour all the time. Yeah. My dad got pulled over and almost cited for that because he's one of those people who fucking camps in the left-hand lane. Yeah. And I'm like, get out of it. Don't do that. You're pissing people off. You're pissing me off. I hate riding with you in the car when you're driving. Or the person who is camping in the left-hand lane, you come up behind them, get pissed, decide to go around them. Then they decide to go over a lane. It's like, well, motherfucker, just let me get past you. <laughs> Yeah, pay pay more attention to what's going on around you and have courtesy for the other drivers on the road. You're not the only one out there. Made me want to murder some people by the time we got anywhere we were going. <laughs> First night we drove from here to Vegas yeah. and stayed there and then drove from Vegas on to Anaheim. And then on the way home, we went from Anaheim to St. George and stayed the night there and drove home. So it wasn't too bad. You know, five, six hours. On each leg. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you stay in Vegas? Oh, uh, Holiday Inn Express. Oh, okay. South end of town. Oh, okay. Tracy signed up for members club things, so she gets points. So now when we go anywhere, we'll be staying at a Holiday Inn Express. Uh, and Oh, nice. Getting your third, seventh night stay or for free or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> It made sense to and do an it. Upgrade because... to your continental breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they have they have an actual breakfast breakfast there. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, well, it's which, Vegas, which is, I mean... is kind of. I mean, it's not fantastic. You know, yeah. it's like fucking scrambled eggs and wafer thin bacon and and you know breakfast cereals and yeah. breads and all cere- watered you know, down all milk, that, all that kind of shit. But I mean, it saves you some money on going out for breakfast yeah. and yeah. the yeah. convenience of having it there. And anyway. So, you should stay at the Holiday Inn Express whenever you go somewhere. Now, fucking pay us, Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> Sponsored by. <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, I want to make it clear that I don't think that we'll ever have sponsors. Probably, no. Because I just wouldn't want to be tied down to anything like that or... Get yelled at for saying something horrible. <sighs> well... Not not liking beholden it. Beholden to anybody. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. And I don't want to represent a company that I am not 100% behind. Behind, yeah. There are a lot of shows out there who are advertising for a particular company that I recently stopped service through. And it's because of their stance on... GMOs. You you wouldn't be sponsored by Blue Apron? No. no <laughs> I, I was going to pull a joke on it. I was going to ask Dan if he's feeling blue about it. <laughs> no, I would not. And, and you know, the, a lot of the shows that are out there that are that are sponsors of it, um, I want to thank Eli and Noah Ooh. from Ooh. The Scathing Atheist for talking to me on Facebook about, oh, okay. you know, my concerns and addressing them and, and assuaging them a great deal. Uh, I still don't 
agree with them a hundred percent, but they were, they were kind enough to take the time out to talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't, I wouldn't want to sponsor anything. I don't want to sponsor fucking underwear or beds or fucking meal club bullshit, anything. Just if, if you want, if you like the show and you want to contribute, I would love for you to do that. You can go to patreon.com slash godless revolution and sign up for as little as a dollar per episode. We, we absolutely love the people who are doing that. If it's any burden to you at all, if it, if it's something where you're thinking, okay, well, I need to choose between maybe supporting the show and doing whatever the fuck else you want to do with your money, <laughs> then, then don't do it. Like if it causes you any stress at all or there's any hardship whatsoever, then don't do it. I, I don't, I don't want you to do it, but if you can, that would be great. And if you can't, it would be great if you would go out and rate us wherever you can on Stitcher or iTunes. And to that end, I want to announce a little drawing that we'll be having because for one reason or another, we, you know, we don't have a ton of iTunes reviews and I would really like to get more of them, particularly since, I don't know, some guy went out, yeah. went out and listened to episode 30, I believe it was. Oh, well, I can just look at his review. I think here. it was That's episode like, what, 30. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah, listen to episode 30, uh, our Kalam Cosmological Argument episode, and gave us a one-star rating on iTunes. His review from Benjalicious says, I wanted to listen to a detailed discussion of the Kalam Cosmological Argument. I listened to episode 30, which was actually titled The Kalam Cosmological Argument. Forty minutes in, I'm still waiting for them to mention the argument, let alone analyze it. So he wrote the review before he had listened to the, the entire show. Apparently has never listened to any of the other shows and gave us a one star rating based on that. And because we don't have a whole lot of reviews, that really Tanks drags yeah. things down. Uh, we did have a five star review come in that I was very happy to see from so long for now. It says as the, as these guys embark on a new season, they revealed something I did not realize which is that they pretty much first met by starting this show. My favorite podcasts are ones that are done by true friends, and from such auspicious beginnings, they have obviously become true friends and seem like people I would really enjoy hanging out with. Here's to a new season. May there be many more. Thank you very much. That was very kind. We are pretty cool to hang out with. (laughs) I like hanging out with me. Yeah. But no, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. So what I want to do and announce this evening is... To let you all know that for all of our existing reviews and for any new reviews, we're going to hold a drawing at the end of July for a fabulous prize. I have several things about yeah, that are collector's items and stuff, and I haven't chosen the exact item Mm -hmm. yet, but it will be something fun, something maybe nerdy, uh, something not inexpensive. And I think you'll like it. I may even give a, uh, you know, for the winner, I may have a, a selection of things that you can choose from, but we'll get that figured out. But I wanted to announce it tonight so that everybody has as much time as possible in order to go out and write a review. You can even pause this episode right now and go and do it if you want. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> we'll, we'll be waiting. We'll wait. <laughs> do, do, Thank you. Do, do, and now that do, you're back do, from writing do. that review. Or for, or for anybody who wants to do it in the future, some simple rules that we have are that because we know that not all of our audience is in the, is in the United States, but iTunes limits the reviews that we here can see, I believe to the United States only. They do it in regions. Like I can't see the reviews from everywhere, which is stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. Um, but so for all of our listeners, whether you're in the United States or elsewhere, just because your username may be something that I don't know who you are and can't decipher and can't contact you via that way. So if you would, if you've already written a review or you're going to write a review, please take a screenshot of it and then send it to us at godlessrevolution at gmail.com. And we'll, we will be keeping track of all of those. Use the subject line review drawing and we'll keep track of all of those through the end of July. And at the end of July, we'll use a random Either a random number generator or pick a name out of a hat. 
Yeah. Like, whichever is easier to uh, accomplish. Yeah. Well, there are all kinds of online tools for yeah. that. You can just feed in all the names and everything, and then it'll randomly pick a yeah. winner for whatever. Um, but then we will randomly pick a winner, and I will ship you out a fabulous prize for writing a review for us. You can make it a drinking game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, just like assign a bunch of people, each one a name, and then just do shots. <laughs> and whoever's the last one to pass out, oh. <laughs> that's who wins. We would have to go through a few rounds of that, whoever pukes. Like, whoever whoever pukes. pukes last. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Or first. Yeah, whoever pukes first, then that name goes, and then, yeah, just... Just, just go. <laughs> just we'll have a pukerama until <laughs> until we get down to one person. You can videotape it and put it on YouTube as, like, a, a bonus. <laughs> but, yeah, if you would do that, that would be awesome. If you can become a Patreon supporter, that would be awesome. I want to thank our current Patreon supporters. We picked up somebody new this week. That would be Mr. Stephen Andrus. Thank you very, thank very you. much. I want to thank our... Our continuing supporters, Mo Cowbell, Jefferson Montoya, Christy Kalbach, Andrew Vodapich, Wes Aaron, Utah Outcasts, Andy Faulkner, Angelica Pearson, Jeremy Goodson, Brandy Hamrick, Taylor Grin, Grant Larimer. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Zavid Acuna and the Gaytheist, Mr. Aaron Burton. Thank you all very, very much for yes. your continued patronage. I really appreciate it. Do we want to go to the news? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Please stand by. The Godless Revolution will continue in a moment. Here follows a public service announcement for the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast. (laughs) Greetings, Americans. Over here in London, we are well aware that not all of you are loud, xenophobic, racist, sexist, religious nuts. But many of your politicians who display these frightful traits seem to be quite popular. Particularly a certain wall-obsessed, small-handed, best word using, daughter-perving, war-inciting, candy-floss-headed clown. To those of you who choose to follow such balderdash, we strongly recommend not to listen to the two sceptical chaps. It probably won't be your cup of tea. Otherwise, give us a listen. Each episode, we cover any news or current affairs from across the globe. Things that annoy or delight us. That's two, as in the number two. And sceptical with a K. The wrong way to spell it. Cheerio! Hello, my name is Gleb Saporski. I am the president of Intentional Insights at intentionalinsights.org. I'm a professor at The Ohio State University studying decision-making in politics and business. And I'm also the leader of the Pro-Truth Pledge project at protruthpledge.org, designed to fight the tide of lies in our politics and promote the truth. And you're listening to The Godless Revolution. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, hey Zeus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family, my two beautiful, beautiful, handsome, striking sons, Walker, and Texas Ranger, or TR as we call him. And of course my red hot smoking wife, Carly, who is a stone cold fox, mm. who if you were to rate her ass on 100, it would easily be a 94. Mm. Also want to thank you for my best friend and teammate, Cal Naughton Jr., who's got my back no matter what. Shake and bake. From the White House to the pews, this is Rebel News. So this woman's from your neck of the woods, Ryan. What sort of. F- she has a similar accent. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so that just automatically makes her from my neck of the woods. Dude, I've been, I, I've been watching. Well, it's a very distinctive accent. Oh, well, Whoa. And I've watched all of the seasons of Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> and the, we watched the season finale last night. And yeah. just, oh yeah, how they yeah. talk and just, yeah. okay then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Uh, but this, this, uh, woman from Minnesota, Republican Abigail, Abigail Whelan says that there's actual joy to be found in Jesus Christ, which is fine, I guess, if she wants uh, to say that. But not when she's being asked something completely fucking different. And not in <laughs> and a not, church. Yeah. 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 Not while she's trying or is supposed to be fulfilling her duties as an elected representative of constituents in the great state of Minnesota. And speaking on the floor of the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Using taxpayer dollars to promote Jesus. That's fucking illegal. But she was asked. So the, this comes to us from Think Progress. 
When pressed about her lack of support for an amendment that would close loopholes for offshore tax havens, a Minnesota Republican dodged the question in favor of talking about her religious beliefs. This was this was sent to us by listener Riley Moore, who's awesome, by the way. That might make sense. Yeah. She's talking about her religious beliefs, which religion loves to hide their money. (laughs) Uh, Well, Jesus did have a lot to say about tax, you know, taxes and... Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota Rep. Abigail Whelan, a second-term House legislator from suburban Ramsey, was responding to a question from Democratic Representative Paul Thiessen early Wednesday morning about whether she thinks, quote, benefiting people who are hiding money in Liberia is worth raising taxes on your own constituents. And then her answer was completely fucking bizarre because she completely ignored the question, like didn't address his question at all and launched into this diatribe about Jesus. Yeah. Let's let's listen to the audio. Will Representative Whalen yield to a question? She will yield. Representative Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Whalen, in light of what Representative Hornstein just said, do you think um, benefiting people who are hiding money in Liberia is more important and, and, and is worth raising taxes on your own constituents? Do you think that's worth raising taxes on your constituents is the question. Yes. He doesn't sound like he's from Minnesota, by the way. Hey. No. <laughs> Carpetbagger. <laughs> he probably doesn't even say boy. <laughs> or sorry. <laughs> Representative Whalen. They look like Thank they're you, all praying. Thank you, Representative Thiessen, <laughs> for the question. It might be because it's late and I'm really tired. But I'm going to take this opportunity to just share with the body something I have been grappling with over the past several months. And is that it, is. That's not the question. That, yeah, that doesn't that's sound the, like she's. We, we don't care about your personal problems. Like, was she even fucking paying attention I, at all? Did she even hear the question? I think she stood up. She's like, oh, fuck. The teacher, the teacher called on me. Maybe it's because yeah. I, maybe I it's because I was just sleeping just now. I didn't I'm study. Really tired. I didn't study last <laughs> night. But, uh, we're in church right now. Okay. I'll bear my testimony. <laughs> the games that we play here. And I just want you to know, Representative Thiessen and the DFL caucus, I forgive you. It is okay because I have an eternal perspective about this. I have an eternal perspective, and I want to share that with you and with the people listening at home, that at the end of the day, when we try to reach agreement with divided government, we win some, we lose some, nobody's really happy. But you know what? Happiness and circumstances, not what it's about. What the? She has an <laughs> eternal perspective. Uh-huh. So, what, so she's saying it's okay to tax You're- the poor. So because you, in the long run, if you look at all of eternity, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. You know, you might be hungry now. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, well, after you die, you have the rest of eternity yeah. to, to be happy. And really, so, stop complaining because if you're a good person, Jesus is going to take you into his yeah. arms and you'll have a mansion in heaven. Yeah. She, she basically decided to testify. Or your own planet or, you know, whatever. Well, maybe that's not quite right. Let's see what her eternal perspective is. There is actual joy to be found in Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you all. There's joy to be found in Jesus Christ? How does she know? Did she cut him open? That's what I was wondering. (laughs) It's like a pinata. (laughs) (laughs) You just, while he's up there on the cross, just start beating him with a stick and looking for joy. Joy falls out. That's where the song Joy, Joy, Joy comes from. Does she masturbate with her crucifix every night? I mean. There's joy to be found in with There's, Jesus in me. Uh, yeah. in me. <laughs> and I know he's coming. Deep, deep, deep inside me. Jesus loves you all. If you would like to get to know him, if you're listening at home, if you're here in this room, please email me, call me. I'd love to talk to you about Jesus. He is the hope of this state and of this country. What? 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 That's oh, not at all what? your fucking job, lady. And it didn't even address... The question on taxes. Not a, not a, not even not a tiny even, bit. No. Wow. <laughs> and she's doing this I, on the, on the floor. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I was blown away by that. I, like I said, listener Riley Moore sent that to us. And I think so my, was, my was, response to her was, what the actual <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was there ever a follow up? I mean, after, I mean, this has been out a couple of days at least. It's been out for about a, 
well, a week at least. Uh, has it been? Has there been any follow up? Has that's all I've seen because that's actually the first time I've seen the video. I've, okay. I've seen the headline, but I've never watched a video. But I'm just wondering. I mean, by now, yeah, I, I would have thought some media outlet would have followed up on this. I don't know. I haven't seen any follow up. This, I mean, this just reports, you know, that that she did this that day while she was there. It doesn't talk about any blowback, and I haven't seen any other follow up on it. I haven't done any searching either, but uh, yeah. I just well, I was flabbergasted. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That she's asked a question about taxes and bears her testimony about Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Well, that last paragraph, I mean. Yeah, I, just reading that. Yeah. I'm just reading that about, you know, she withholding $14 million from Minnesota University's research because of fetal, because they're doing research on fetal tissue. Yeah. Yeah. She championed the bill to withhold that unless they stopped using fetal tissue from aborted fetuses in, in medical research. And and that to me is like the most ridiculous fucking stance to have at all. Like you can be pro-life. Yeah. But even if you're pro-life, wouldn't you want some good to come out of that abortion? Like some, some, some small ray of hope, some, some little bit of decency in your own mind to come out of that, out of that abortion, well, that the, that that aborted fetus can do some good in the world. I, I wonder if she would have withheld the $14 million if they're using human cadavers, people that donated their bodies to science because, hey, you're cutting on humans. I don't know. I, that was a life. Yeah. One, and there's, there's always a, a perpetual hypocrisy about this in that, uh, if you ask, if you, if you were to ask her, about uh, doing the exact same thing with uh, in vitro fertilization, that most likely her answer would be very different. And mm -hmm. yet the exact same thing happens. They fertilize. Uh, I have nothing against IVF. I'm, I'm all for IVF. It's like, yeah, let's overpopulate the planet as much as we can. <laughs> Go for it. But they fertilize way more eggs than they use. Oh, yeah. And and the leftover ones are either destroyed, frozen, or donated to science for for science for yeah. research. Yeah, because they fertilize a bunch of them to see, hey, which one has the most viability? Which, which two or three are the most viable? Yeah, they fertilize up to a dozen eggs mm -hmm. in every IVF procedure because it's so goddamn expensive. Yeah, and they only use two or three at a time, and the rest of them are are either again frozen discarded or or medical research yeah which is the exact same thing it's a fertilized that you're egg. doing with with uh, an aborted fetus mm -hmm. but people like her never have a problem with IVF except it's the exact same process it's it's a fertilized egg, egg. And according I, I, to them it starts it's when it's fertilized life. yep so yeah the hypocrisy there is it kind of amazes me but uh, yeah, it amazes me and it doesn't surprise me at all because they're such huge hypocrites about so well, many yeah. other things. The next rant will start right after this. Hi guys, this is Tom, your friendly neighborhood atheist. I want to tell all your listeners about the Gateway to Reason conference being held in St. Louis, July 28th through the 30th. I also want to introduce them to the 27 scheduled speakers and entertainers plus some of the people like me and Thomas Westbrook of Holy Kool-Aid, who will be attending. So I'm doing a series of interviews called Getting Ready for Gateway. They can just search YouTube for Getting Ready for Gateway, and I will be posting new interviews every day. The conference is only $50 for this three-day event, and it's going to be a ton of fun hanging out with people like Matt Dillahunty, Aaron Raw, and Seth Andrews, and even David Smalley, if you know about that other podcast. I hope they check them out. They can get the full details on the conference at gatewaytoreason.com. Thanks, and it's Getting Ready for Gateway on YouTube. It's going to be awesome. Hey, all you dirty cis people out there who think you run the world, this is the trans podcaster Marissa Alexa McCool coming to say that you should go sit in the corner and listen to other people talk, and the people you should listen to are the godless revolution folks because they're the good kind of cis people. We don't have to shame them just as much. So you go ahead and listen to them, and then you come listen to us so we can tell them why they need to apologize. Dear Lord Baby Jesus, we also thank you for my wife's father, Chip. We hope that you can use your Baby Jesus powers to heal him and his horrible leg. And it smells terrible, and the dogs are always mm. bothering with it. Mm. 
You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. We we were sent a oh. submission for our basket of deplorables. Oh, yeah, I shit. did I did see this video and this guy does well belong in the basket. Holy <laughs> shit, I haven't even heard this one. This this was sent to us from listener Brandon Osborne. What Apparently rock there was, have I been under? Oh yeah, this was I saw this. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. It was before I went to California. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't believe like the restraint people had around this guy hmm. was amazing. Um, but there was a, a young white man apparently at a Starbucks who, because he had coffee spilled on him on accident, spat on a black man, yelled, shut up slave and demanded that he get on all fours because this man is black and doesn't deserve to be walking around on two legs. I was like, holy shit. Jesus Christ. I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, <laughs> I am not a violent person, but I mean, I, I'd i have a hard time not. You know, I was really surprised in watching the video, and, and we'll probably play it in a little bit here. But I was really surprised not only at the restraint of people, and maybe it wasn't even restraint, because looking back on it now, you know, there, there's a bunch of people around and there, you know, a bunch of people filming and a bunch of people just kind of gawking. And then at one point, this asshole punches mm -hmm. like a 63 year old yeah. man or something like that, and knocks they, this guy down. Then they get him. Yeah. And then, and then people, you know, rush in to tackle him and hold him until police come. But when there's, there's a certain shock factor with these things too. Yeah. It takes a minute. To, to sink realize. in. I mean, did this guy really fucking just say what he just said? Yeah. You know, it takes a minute to kind of wrap your mind around it and figure well, and, out. And you want to be charitable to people, right? Like, you don't want to automatically just assume that what you heard was exactly what they yeah. said necessarily. So I get that there would be a little bit of hesitation and stuff, but I mean, it goes on for a while. But this story comes to us from Dead State says that a 23-year-old white Chicago man was charged with three counts of misdemeanor battery early Tuesday afternoon after an altercation was caught on video showing him spit on a black man and calling another a slave. According to CNN, the incident began when William Boucher, a Caucasian male wearing a light-colored suit, became angry when someone had allegedly spilled a beverage on him at a Starbucks on West Lake Street. Police say the situation spilled onto the sidewalk where Boucher spat on a man 30, and a woman, 34, and punched an older man. The older man was taken to a hospital with an eye injury. Quote, we have absolutely no tolerance for this type of behavior in our stores and are grateful to the partners, employees, and customers who stepped in to help until officers arrived, said a Starbucks spokesperson in an email to CNN. Quote, I was shocked because I thought it was going to end right there. Security was going to come, the cops were going to show up said Starbucks employee Juan Torres. From CNN, it says, Your children are disposable vermin, Voucher said to the unidentified black man before walking away. Shut up, slave. Do not talk to me. A bystander seemed to push Voucher out away, trying to calm him. Voucher then spat at the man whose children he had called disposable vermin. Holy shit. Get on all fours now. Do not walk off on two legs, Voucher said to the unidentified black man. We'll play the video. So there's a bunch of people milling around Starbucks. This guy's obviously upset. He's waving his arms, pointing at people. And they keep cutting out the swear words. Yeah. All the swears are cut out. I tried to look for one with swears in it, but they wouldn't fucking give it to me. I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> if the, the original, the person who made the video, Cut, cut out, it, yeah. it cut it all out before they posted the first one. That's so what I think. Every other copy has yes. it. Yeah. Yes, and catch thirty-five. So he walks out, yells at the guy that he's a slave, and this this black man is filming him with his phone. And the, the guy in the suit walks over to him in a menacing manner. The guy puts down his phone like, oh, it's on. Yeah. He was ready to fight. <laughs> Your children are disposable vermin. Jesus.
yells your children are disposable vermin. Then he goes to walk away. Then he comes back to yell some more. There's like no security anywhere. And he spits on him. Oh, and then the guy, <laughs> then the guy does drop his phone and like rushes him, like he's gonna take a swing. Somebody else steps in the middle and is trying to break things up a bit. Yelling at him to get down on all four all legs. fours. You don't this deserve to walk away I'd, on two I'd legs, fucking, you vermin. I would, I would hold off the black guy, and then I'd fucking duck him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy's a puny guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And he's dressed like he's going to fucking Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> So then he's walking down the road, an old guy comes up, and he just fucking decks this guy. Yeah. Wait a minute, back that up? I, that just, happened really quick. Yeah, I, well, the, the old guy just, like, wandered up, and it looked like he, he was just like, like, hey, man, what's going on? And this it, guy just hauls off and decks him. Look at that, just boom. boom. I wonder if he said something. Now everybody's after him. And white boy's not running very far. No. You ever seen that movie White Men Can't Jump? Uh huh. This one's called White Boy Can't Run. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he started everything. So then they subdue him and hold him down until police can arrive. Then the other white guy that was trying to hold the black guy back is like, uh uh, we ain't holding no one back anymore. I'm going to help you pummel this kid's ass. So then it just goes on and. Jesus. But yeah. Kid got arrested. I know that. I think that's a good submission for the oh, yeah. basket of deplorables. Oh, he should go right to the fucking top of the basket. Yeah. Or is it the, is the bottom worse? Top or bottom? I don't... Well, it depends on your preference, I guess. Are you a top or a bottom? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like to switch it up. <laughs> but yeah, thank let's, you very much for that, Let's Brandon. learn more about Ryan today. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to let us know, Ryan? I don't know. My mom listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I are you, are you gonna have to? <laughs> you gonna have to tell her what a top and a bottom is. <laughs> no, but she'll. She said it was our last episode. She listened to was very funny, and she liked it. Oh yeah. Well, didn't you, didn't she not listen to an episode because of reasons? Uh, well, when we said cunt too many times, she said she had to turn it off. <laughs> oh, and then we said fuck too much, and and my uh, nephew was over at the house, so she had to turn it off. Uh yeah. For reasons. But, but, but she did say, good podcast. You guys make me laugh. Oh, good. I, I'm happy that we can make your mother happy. Yes. Uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll move on to other things. Okay. Yay. Hey, everybody. This is X. And I'm Kyle. And I'm Felicia. We're the Utah Outcasts. Three out, unashamed, and active atheists living in Utah. And we are personally inviting you to let us love your ears each and every week. As we take the news, current events, and pop culture and give it a little twist. A love twist with consent. And we'll be joined each week by a special guest to tell us what makes them an outcast like us. Come find us. The Utah Outcasts. On PodHell.com, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And on UtahOutcast.com. We finally bought that domain off the kids handing out mixtapes in the mall. Come be an outcast with us. Take care of yourselves out there. Bonne nuit. And you're welcome. Hi, this is Michelle Short. And this is Stu DeHaan. And we're the co-chapter heads of the Satanic Temple in Arizona. You're listening to The Godless Revolution. For cool Satan swag, please visit the website shopsatan.com. Dear tiny infant Jesus. Hey, um, you know, sweetie, Jesus did grow up. You don't always have to call him baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. 
When you say grace, you can say it to grown-up Jesus or teenage Jesus or bearded Jesus or whoever you want. You know what I want? I want you to do this grace good so that God will let us win tomorrow. <sighs> Dear tiny Jesus, in your golden fleece diapers with your tiny little fat balled-up fist pawing. He was a man. He had a beard. Look, I like the baby version the best. Do you hear me? I win the races and I get the money. Ricky, finish the damn grace. Thanks for listening. Now back to the show. So there was some good news in the separation of religion and state recently. Yay. Good. <laughs> un- <laughs> unfortunately, there, there just isn't enough good news on, yeah. on that front. Well, and we'll get into days. we'll get into some of the reasons why for that in just a moment. But this comes to us from the American Humanist Association. Uh, Monica Miller, senior counsel, scored a big win for the separation of church and state. When on June 19th, it was announced uh, by the American Humanist Association uh, that they were pleased that the United States District Court for the Northern District of Florida delivered a favorable decision that echoed the AHA's argument over an unconstitutional religious display on public grounds in Pensacola, Florida. Last week, the AHA's Monica Miller presented oral arguments in Pensacola, arguing that the cross being displayed and maintained by taxpayer money was an overt endorsement of Christianity above other religions and is thus unconstitutional. Despite the city of Pensacola stating that the cross was not religious in nature, churches and Christian organizations have congregated near the cross, which has an inscription referencing Easter. After filing for summary judgment with the Freedom From Religion Foundation in April of this year, the AHA presented its arguments last Thursday, with the ruling arriving earlier today. What pisses me off about this, what initially pissed me off anyway, is that they're making the same fucking case for this, not the AHA, but the the religious people mm-hmm. are saying, oh, it's not a religious symbol. Yeah, which yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a fucking cross with an inscription on it for a fucking Christian <laughs> holiday. Yeah. The, the city of Pensacola is stating that it, it it's a giant cross. Of course it's not religious. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck else is what? it? <laughs> there are no power lines strung from this motherfucker. It, it, There's no kite material hanging somewhere behind it. It just symbolizes crosshairs in the sky or two sticks that fell on top of each other and then were erected. <laughs> we just really like power poles here. And, yeah. and uh, so we made this monument dedicated to them. Never mind the... The inscription or, you know, stuff about or, Easter and all that the, stuff. That's... The church groups that use this as a place to fucking proselytize. <laughs> so if I, if I threw my, like, tied together boots over over one of the things, they wouldn't have a problem with no. it. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm cause... sure. Uh, quote, we are pleased that the court struck down this cross as violative of the First Amendment, said Monica Miller, senior counsel at the Epi- Epi- Epignani. <laughs> I'm murdering that, I know. Epignani <laughs> Humanist Legal Center. The cross was totally unavoidable to park patrons, and to have citizens foot the bill for such a religious symbol is both fair, is both unfair and unconstitutional. Which is the big thing, is taxpayers' dollars going to a religious... Yeah, and to maintain it. Putting yeah. it up, maintaining it, yeah. Yeah, and so Grant, you said that there there isn't enough good news about this kind of stuff. There, Yeah. But every now and then we we score a win here. Yeah, and and part of the reason for that is because even for minor things like this, I mean, things that are obviously violative, uh, as Monica said, violative of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, something that is as cut and dry as this, where it's, it's a giant religious symbol mm-hmm. paid for or with maintained by through taxpayer funds, something like that. Even getting that taken away when the when the defense of it was that it's not a religious symbol anyway, and so it's taken away, and then religious people lose their fucking minds yeah. about it. I mean it's 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 fucking settled law. It's yeah. been settled law for a long time. Yep. Right. I it it dumbfounds me that that they even bring these cases anymore. That that these cities and these groups spend the millions of dollars to take this shit all the way up to the Supreme Court because they're going to lose every yeah. goddamn time. It's settled law. How how do they justify spending all that money, other people's money? Because the Christian group raised a ton lose. of money to try to defend it. They they view it as us taking away their rights. And, it's and not. that's not what's going on. Yeah. 
But but that's how well, they count you. That's how they present it. One one of their other arguments is the cross has been there for decades, which doesn't fucking matter. Which yeah. it, it, so so you know I mean if if it was a violation of the Constitution, then it should have been argued like decades ago. Well, that that's irrelevant. I mean, slavery was in place for decades. Yeah. Before we outlawed, you know, I mean, it's a tradition. Uh, it's yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's what the South said. Yeah. That's what the South said. And look how that turned out. So, yeah, it's I, – I can't imagine why they would spend money on, on these cases. They do it in hopes of winning – well, I, I think you, there are a couple of different reasons. I think it's They've a, it's a huge know money – they're not going to yeah, win. Well, it's a huge fundraiser for a lot of these organizations. The ACLJ takes in fuckloads of money over stuff like this. They send out letters to all of their credulous dipshit people who send them money saying, oh – our religion is under attack. You need to send us money so that we can defend against these types of encroachments against our religious expression. Hmm. And credulous dipshits fork over everything they can in support of maintaining this non-religious yeah. symbol of a cross that, uh, you know, isn't a religious symbol, but I'm going to be really fucking mad as a religious person if it goes away. But, but, the, but then they have to give up, you know, I mean, they have to choose between sending money to them or sending, you know, buying their Confederate, uh, their flag, Confederate, flag their, their Confederate plate, uh, or their collection. Slop yeah. bucket from or their fucking slop Jim Baker. Bucket. So <laughs> I, I read, a, I read an article about this on, on Fox News. Uh -huh. And one of the things that really jumped out at me on, on their article was they, they threw in an adjective, some, I want to say militant. But it might have been something else. The militant freedom from religion foundation. Oh, they're so yeah. The, the militant, or it, it might have been some other adjective. But yeah. it was something. Some it just jumped right out at me yeah. that I mean this this just shows exactly what Fox News is trying to communicate about FFRF. Yeah, Fox News would never put a spin on anything. Oh God, no, well, no, well, they're fair and balanced. Oh no, they're not anymore. No. They don't use that term yeah, anymore because they know they're not. Well, and part of the reason that monuments like this stay up for so long and are, and go unchallenged for so long is because a lot of people are terrified of exactly what has happened yeah. to Monica Miller because of this. Uh, we've got a story here from the friendly atheist uh, Hemant Mehta. He says that earlier this week, a judge in Florida ruled that a giant government-sponsored Christian cross in Pensacola had to come down. It was clearly an establishment of religion, he said, adding, the law is the law. The attorney who successfully argued this case for the American Humanist Association's blah, 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 Humanist Legal Center <laughs> was Monica Miller, who's been with the AHA for five years. Her bio is incredibly impressive. She's done a lot of work in the past several years on behalf of atheist plaintiffs. But this recent victory really struck a nerve with Christians who are now harassing her and the American Humanist Association. And he he makes a bunch of, you know, he puts a bunch of uh, screen grabs of posts from all of these religious people who are losing their fucking minds yeah. over a cross being taken down. Their safe space is being taken away. Yeah. Yeah, this one, th this first one is from Lou Cobb. It says, and it's a picture of Monica. Um, it says, here's the idiot attorney that fought for removal of cross in Pensacola. Let's make her famous and run her out of town. No D at the end of the word. And well, he's, he's talking like a southerner <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and let's run, run her, her out, out of town. town. So the, the implied threat there, let's make her famous. How are you going to make her famous? How are you, what are you going to do and to make her famous? And why would you want to make her famous unless you're making her famous because you kill her? Yeah. And you want to run her out of town? You don't even know where the fuck she is. And why are you so upset about this? I'm, I'm, does, he, does he think this is something Jesus would condone? Yes, probably. Well, they, they certainly think that. Uh, Hammond says that that's bad enough, but the shares and responses to that post are even worse. Greg Saner who shared Lou Cobb's post, says in all caps and horrible grammar. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. She also, period, won the Watakunt of the Year Award, dot, 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 beat my ex out of it, LOL. Call TBE number on her puncture. I did. I don't think they like me. I don't like you either, Greg. You're a fucking moron. Ah. Well, then there's the one where someone puts a comment with a boo and three pistols. Yeah. Uh, somebody else just posted fucking cunt. 
Atheist, moron, hypocrite, needs to go bye-bye, like to Afghanistan or Iraq. She looks like she think she looks like she thinks she is beautiful and sexy. She's ugly as sin, literally. So no, she's actually argument. really attractive. Their, yeah, their, their argument she's, she's is, is that the atheist needs to go to a, a religious, religious theocracy. Cult. Yeah. Because that that violates what the 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 American theocracy. I mean, I don't know. And I've been to Afghanistan and Iraq. It's actually quite beautiful. During well, and these, do, do, uh, these Christians are acting they, like ISIS and the Taliban. That's are, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the point I was getting at. Is that that a lot of these American Christians are are acting exactly like the theocracies in the Middle East? Uh huh. American Taliban. Other comments are cocksucking whore, witch hunt, sperm burping whore. It's just a shame nobody made her famous and turned her into a hit and run victim. If harm comes to this lady, I'll be it'll be on your head, all of your heads. And then somebody replied, No, it will be on her own head because she is making a choice to turn her back on God, so she will have no protection from God because of her decision. Why did God not protect your fucking cross? <laughs> <laughs> if he was that fucking into it, he would have protected that. Why? God damn it. It's like they don't stop for a fucking moment to think about anything they say or write. No. Or yeah. think just nothing. There's no thought in it at all. He he could have swung the, the court decision. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He, I mean, he could have influenced the court decision. Working through those mysterious ways working that, through, that could have uh, been, you know, completely undetectable even. You know, it could have just been a the, burn, most, the a burning, most ordinary people and atheists would pass it off as just those activist judges. Yeah. Oh, those judges. Or, I mean, he could have had a fucking burning bush in, yeah. in the courtroom. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Sent in a talking snake. Yeah. Something. Hemant says that these posts, I assure you, are just a sampling of what people have said online. And I, I'm friends with Monica on mm. Facebook, and she posted a few of the things. And, yeah, they're fucking horrific. Yeah. Some of the things people have sent to her and have said about her, I can't imagine that. Their preachers, most of them, would be very happy about their congregants sending such hurtful, hateful, awful, threatening things to her. But that's I, a big I part would, of why I would partially agree. I, I think there are a lot of preachers, depending on what denomination you're talking about, who who would oh yeah sure. be uh, find this problematic. But not all of them. No. Yeah, there there are a lot of Christian oh, yeah. denominations well, I mean, we, where, where the from... preachers. Are, are just as bad as these people. Yeah, we've played clips and read stories yeah. about all kinds of preachers yeah. who yeah. say really harmful Horrendous shit. shit. Not the least of which is, ah, oh, what's The cross-wearing hat guy? was that guy from Texas a few weeks ago? Or the Arizona pastor who always or maybe the Arizona Yeah, the one. Arizona guy, I can't remember uh, his name right now. I think there was one in the basket of deplorables. Yeah, we've put a few of them in there. But, like I was saying, you know, a big part of why these monuments stay up for so long and go unchallenged for so long is because of threats like this. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, kudos to Monica and the AHA for being brave enough to stand up to this kind of shit. I, I feel terrible that she's having to go through all of this, but I really, really appreciate her bravery mm -hmm. yeah. and her honesty and integrity in, in taking this to court and having it removed because it benefits everybody. And that's the other thing that Christians don't seem to fucking understand is that if they want religious privilege, then they should expect that other religions are going to want the same fucking yeah. thing. And Christianity yeah. may not be the dominant or majority religion in the United States forever. And so what happens when, let's say, for oh, whatever reason, Islam, Islam, I, Islam becomes or, the dominant or majority religion in the United States, and then what, were you, what would you do? I, I do love the fact that the Satanic Temple won the right to put up their uh, 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 veteran monument. Yeah. In Minnesota, their someplace. memorial display, yeah, yeah, the the box with the helmet on. Yep, yeah. Well, I mean, Christians do they do freak out when when any other religion, Islam or or anyone else, tries to assert their religious privilege. Mm -hmm. We we've seen that in cases about a uh, uh, charter school money going to religious schools. Yeah. And then they start going to Islamic schools, and, and they the Christians the fuck are out. the Christians are like. Wait a minute, we didn't mean for this to go to Islamic yeah. schools. Only the ones that preach <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It, not, it's not not Muhammad. 
Hi, this is Yvette Dontremont, a.k.a. The Cybabe, and you're listening to Godless Revolution. You can find me at Cybabe.com, at my Twitter account, at The Cybabe, and if you've hunt really hard, you can find me at Pornhub. I dare you. I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t-shirt, because it says, like, I want to be formal, but I'm here to party, too. Because I like to party, so I like my Jesus to party. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. I like to think of Jesus like with giant eagle's wings and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with like an angel band. And I'm in the front row and I'm hammered drunk. Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. Uh, Did you guys see that a resolution condemning white supremacy? Caused all kinds of yeah. chaos at the Southern Baptist Convention. Yeah, they really? Actually, they had an issue with that. <laughs> Why? Why would they have an uh, issue with that? Well, and I, what I don't understand is, and I made a post about this on Facebook, is that I don't understand how any person of color can be Mormon or Southern Baptist. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the LDS church barred black people from holding the priesthood until 19-fucking-78, when God apparently suddenly changed his mind, or you know, more than a decade after the civil rights yeah. Oopsie. was passed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when there were protests on BYU and Boy Scouts were about to pull out of the church. And, yeah, well, and the Southern yeah. Baptist Convention but, was started explicitly and expressly because the main Baptist Convention wouldn't condone slavery and there were a whole bunch of there were a whole bunch of baptists who were like no we need to keep our slavery we're gonna go and, and misogyny they they didn't want intermixing yeah. of the races and so they were like no well we're gonna go start our own baptist congregation then just in the south it was over that one yeah. issue and now there are a ton a ton of black southern baptists i don't i don't understand that how does that shit happen because a lot of them ended up in the South, so they had no other choice but to be a Southern Baptist. Like, do they have no hi- no idea of the history of their church? Depends on their education. I just, I mean, you know, indoctrination's a thing. Yeah. When you're brought up from teeny tiny to believe that this is the truth, then and, and nobody ever questions it around you. Nobody ever even makes it possible for you to have any question or doubt about it. Then I can see that happening, but. At a certain point, you're just choosing to to be ignorant about it on purpose. You know, you, you choose to maintain the beliefs that you want to have rather than seeking to know if they're actually the truth. Yeah. You have to be willfully ignorant of so much information around you. Yeah. Or you just ignore the information to preserve. Well, yeah, you're, you're well, being willfully that's, ignorant. That's, of the, it, that's yeah. a willful part of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you willfully block all that shit out. Donald Trump is under personal investigation. Yes, he is. Himself, after making this a big deal for so long. But wait, I keep seeing all the But wait, his lawyer says he isn't. Yeah, yeah. He was on on (laughs) Fox News the other day saying Trump is not under investigation, has no clue why people think uh, he is. Wait a minute. After he said he wasn't under investigation, then he said he was twice. Then he said he wasn't. Well, no, it was was Trump that said he was, because they're asking him, well, Trump said he's under investigation in his tweet, but you're saying he's not, so is he or is he not? But then during that same interview, he said he was twice, and Chris Wallace, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Chris Wallace, and but as Fox News people go, (laughs) uh, he's not the worst. And he not really, the worst, not the best either. Not He's, the best, yeah. but not the worst. But he nailed the lawyer on because he, the lawyer came out and said. He's not under investigation. Then he's followed that up saying twice. Yeah, he was under investigation. And then Chris Walls was like, you just said he was under investigation twice, just like 60 seconds yeah. ago. And he's like, oh, let me make it perfectly clear. He's not, not under, under investigation. Yeah. They can't make up their goddamn mind. It's like, well, if he's not under investigation, then why is the FBI doing an investigation right now? I, that would lead me to believe that he is. Well, but they're saying he's not personally under investigation. Well, yeah. The, the FBI is is doing an investigation, but he, the, the lawyer is trying to claim that it's not Trump. Who's being investigated. Which is kind of hard not to be Trump that's under investigation for the yeah. whole 
thing. It's like it's how can he not be, be part of the investigation? investigation? Yeah, but we've got this video. <laughs> this is from Late Night with Seth Meyers. Yeah, where he goes through a few of the different appearances that Trump's attorney made over the weekend, trying to say that Trump isn't under investigation, even though Trump himself tweeted that he was under he investigation, was. and. Donald Trump's attorney, even in these conversations, is saying he's under investigation and then later reverses himself. Yeah. It's it's weird. And yet a member of Trump's legal team, Jay Sekulow, made the rounds on the Sunday shows and tried to act if the president had not said what he said, resulting in the bizarre spectacle of news anchors trying to square Sekulow's claim that the president is not under investigation with Trump's own tweet that he is under investigation. First up, Jake Tapper. Should we take that tweet from the president as confirmation that the president is under investigation? Let me be clear. The president's not under investigation. So the president said, I am under investigation, even though he isn't under investigation? The president <laughs> is not under investigation. The president issued that tweet, that social media statement, based on a fake report, a, a report with no documented sources from the Washington Post. So, so the up. president of the United States is making statements based on undocumented sources. <laughs> yes. That's, that's what his lawyers say, <laughs> that he is so fucking incompetent <laughs> that he's going to release statements based on shit that he doesn't even know is true or not. He might have the tapes, though. But no, he announced no, today he, that he doesn't. He announced that, hey, he doesn't have the tapes. There are no goddamn tapes. What, you mean he lied on, on Twitter? Trump lied? No, oh. no. Well, we can get to that in a second, too. I, I right. wanted to talk about that, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I want to see if he continues on with Chris Wallace here, because that one was pretty good. That one was amazing. And then there was Fox News anchor Chris Wallace, who was baffled when Seculo admitted that the president <laughs> is under investigation, only to immediately contradict himself. The president has not been notified by anyone that he's under investigation. So he's being investigated for taking the action that the attorney general, deputy attorney general, recommended him to take. First of all, you've now said that he is yeah. being investigated after saying that you didn't. No. You, you just said that <laughs> <laughs> he is being he's, he's uh, like, no, no, I didn't say that. Just said it. You just fucking said it. We've got video. Roll, yeah. roll that shit back. <laughs> we, we have video of you fucking saying it. I wish they could do live replay for him. <laughs> the NFL you know. can do it. Why can't the Sunday show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> general recommended him to take first of all you've now said that he is being investigated after saying that you didn't know you you just said no, sir he's being he's being, you said he is being investigated and it's not Chris, just being and, and, is, wait a minute wait a minute Chris, jay you don't know whether he's under you don't know whether he's under investigation you don't know whether he's under investigation or not the president can't be indicted under the constitution for the activities alleged in something like this of course not uh, why is that because there's not an investigation <laughs> that doesn't Jesus. mean this is weird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is I want, weird. I want to back that up again for just a sec. That was fucking hilarious. And there's well, you don't know whether that's a president. Oh boy, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't believe when I when I saw that. Like, wait. Like I'm, I'm watching it, and and he he had the Trump's attorney. I was watching the Chris Wallace one. Yeah, and Trump's attorney had mentioned said, "Oh well, he's not under investigation. We've not received any notification. Blah blah blah. There's no there's no investigation of the president." And Chris Wallace asks him another question, and then the guy's like, "Well, you know, he's he's being investigated by the same people who made the recommendation yeah. that he did these things." And Chris Wallace is like. Wait, wait, what? You just it's, said he's not that he's under, not under investigation. Now you say that he that he is. I didn't say that. They're they're trying desperately to justify the investigation and to say there's no investigation simultaneously. Yeah. I I I don't know how you square that circle. Well, and this is after Trump himself tweeted that he was under investigation. Yeah. yeah. So and so today we have we had a couple really big things come out. I, I'm not sure which one was announced first. I think it was I think the, the tapes were first. You think the tapes were first? I thought, I, I thought it was that the so there were the two big things are that Donald Trump said that he does not have tapes of James Comey mm -hmm. meeting with him in the White House. The other big thing is that the GOP released the full text of the AHCA. Oh, yeah, that 
And I, I thought that the AHCA thing came out first well, and then Trump tweeted. For some deal. reason, I thought I was watching the news this morning. Uh, it was around like 7, 38, 8 a.m. Uh-huh. sitting on my couch watching the news. And I swear they were talking about the tapes. And that was right around the exact time the AHA got released. The AHCA. AHCA. Yeah. yeah the, the new health care oh, bill. <laughs> uh, was released. So they kind of stopped on that. Like, oh, wait, we got to get back to this. Like, just let you know, hey, it's been released. We're going to read through it as soon as we can. And they got back to talking about well, it. Well, that would make sense because he usually tweets at like all weird ass hours yeah. of the evening or early morning. Yeah. And, and eight in the morning for us here is what's what? 11, 10 o'clock. 10? Yeah. 10. 10 o'clock on the East Coast. So what, what bothers me about Trump's tweet that he doesn't have any tapes is that he first made the tweet. Well, he, James Comey had better hope that there aren't any tapes before he goes leaking information to the press or before he starts talking to the press, basically intimating that he had tapes of Comey, well, right? Right. Well, later on, he even said, oh, I'll release the tapes when I need to. Yeah. And then people started asking him questions about, well, do the tapes actually exist? And he played fucking coy about it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Why are you asking? Maybe there are, maybe there aren't. I'm not going to tell you. Well, I mean, it's, it's all part of the game show. It's, I mean, it's, it's part of building up the suspense of the game show for the episode where you have the big reveal. And, and today was the big reveal, reveal of, 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 of this of week's, shit. of this week's episode of, of The Apprentice. Uh, of the Trump show. Yeah. Well, so I don't know. It, it just, it strikes me as very odd that he would first intimate that there are tapes, which, when he did that, I thought, well, is he just making an idle threat here? Like, in his mind, he really thinks, and I think we talked about it on yeah. on, the, on our last episode. I that think he it really was bullshit. Thinks that you know that there are tapes, and he really thinks that this is a threat that may yeah. stop Comey from talking. I, I, that was my opinion even w- back when he first said it. Was that it was just bullshit? Was that, that it was that just bullshit no that he was just trying to intimidate? Yeah, and and that was just bullshit. Well, and then, but then he's it, a bullshit artist. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a fucking grifter. Oh, yeah. Well, but even after Comey's testimony, where Comey said, you know, this is what happened when I met with the president, mm-hmm. and these are the discussions we had. He kicked everybody out, asked me to drop the Flynn investigation, asked for my loyalty, blah, blah, blah. Trump, and then people started asking Trump again, okay, well, do these tapes exist? Are there tapes out there? Because Comey said, well, uh, Oh, Lordy, I hope they do. (laughs) Yeah. I hope they do exist. (laughs) My feelings won't be hurt. He should just release all the tapes if there are any. And people asked Trump about it even then. And he said, I'll tell you when I tell you. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you now. Well, when are you going to tell us? Soon. It'll be soon. I'm going to tell you soon. Very soon. Like, do you not fucking know? Why the fuck? Why wouldn't you answer that simple fucking question? But (laughs) because, again, it's, it's part of the reality show. It's a, uh, he's a child. This is all reality show tactics to build up suspense for the next week's episode. Well, I mean, and then uh, and then it just seemed really. I mean, it's fucking bullshit that that our government is being run yeah. like like a goddamn reality show. But that's exactly what's happening. Well, then it just seemed really convenient that he happens to tweet out that the tapes don't exist. That he doesn't have any tapes. He never had any tapes on the same day that they finally released the text for the AHCA plan. Well, because he knows it's going to get buried. Yeah, it, it yeah, does. because he wanted to draw attention from people who would choose to read the AHCA shit, yeah. right? It, it does, but on the other hand, there is the Senate subcommittee, I forget which one, uh, not the judiciary, but one of the other ones, uh, gave him a deadline of tomorrow to hand over any audio or transcripts or anything of the meeting. The deadline to hand over the tapes was tomorrow. Was it tomorrow or today? I, if I remember what I read today right, mm. it was the deadline was Friday. Mm. So he still could so, have waited for that tweet uh, until tomorrow. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It just seems awfully convenient. You're like, right. It it does. Like he like he was just trying to hang on to something to draw attention away from this horrible fucking mess of a. And it's not yeah, outside a healthcare bill. It's not outside his history. This is exactly what he does. Every time something negative happens, he tweets out some some god awful yeah. thing that deflects attention from the the other thing in the news. Yeah. So it's his pattern. 
just just seemed very shitty to me. And it, it really bothered me that he wouldn't just answer the fucking question initially. Like, do the tapes exist or not, motherfucker? Yeah. Why can't you tell they us? Do that? fucking release them. Yeah. And if you have if you have evidence that Comey's lying, then fucking let us know, yeah. man. You know, you you're the one who's under investigation now, not Comey. Yeah. Hi, this is Justin Schieber, formerly of the Reasonable Doubts podcast and currently of Real A Theology, and you are listening to the Godless Revolution. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. In college, I was a philosophy major. Or was I? Who can say? Hard to tell. What's philosophy? It's a thing. Or is it? You guys get it. Or do you? Doesn't matter. Or does it? And we're closer to death. We don't have a whole lot of time left tonight, and I wanted to get to a couple other stories that have been brewing. I'd like to see if I can get this guy on the show. Neurobiologist Robert Sapolsky, who says that you have no free will. And this is something that I oh, tend not to believe in. <laughs> oh, well, this is something that I that I think is true. I mean, he yeah. th- this this is an article on Vice that goes through his arguments and he recently released a book that says behave it's the title of the book is behave the biology of humans at our best and worst um but he he lays out his case really well about why he believes why he's a a hard determinist Mm -hmm. you know he he thinks compatibilist views are okay and fine for a lot of different things but unless we can really move past them in our understanding of why people do the things that they do we're going to be stuck for a long time and we need we need to figure out ways in which we can learn that or or a, adopt a mindset where people don't do things strictly out of choice and to punish people for things that they do when a lot of the things that do that they do aren't necessarily a conscious choice that they're making it's a series of situations and and decisions and things throughout their life that have led them into whatever circumstance that may end up with them ultimately doing something harmful, but that doesn't mean that they've made a conscious decision to be an asshole, right? There, there's right. no, there's no way that they could have consciously made all of the decisions in their life that have led them to something that, for example, we would want to lock them away for. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, there's one of the questions in here that I thought was really good. Um, says that, This is from the vice reporter. He says, you open the book confessing that you have a fantasy of enacting justice against Hitler, even though that fantasy contradicts your scientific perspective concerning justice against evil. It sounds like you're suggesting that we should have empathy for those who commit the worst crimes, even if it goes against our impulses. And Dr. Sapolsky's response is, the analogy I always use, which is so difficult for people to swallow when it comes to the criminal justice system, is that if a car has faulty brakes, you fix the brakes. If the brakes are not fixable, you put the car in the garage for the rest of the time, and your primary responsibility is to make sure that this car with the faulty brakes doesn't hurt anybody. But nobody's saying you're punishing the car. Nobody's accusing your car of having a moral failing. Somehow we need to reach that mindset. So basically saying that, you know, people who commit these crimes, it's not a moral failing for a lot of these people, or for, I guess he would probably argue, all of them. It's it's that there's something faulty with them, and if we can't fix them, you know, our our current justice system is set up for punishment. It's not yeah. it's not a rehabilitative system. Not at all. No. You know, it's it's there to punish people for the crimes that they've committed. Yeah. And until we can reach the mindset where, you know, where we don't, where we're not seeking to punish people, where we're seeking to rehabilitate them, mm-hmm. and that if we can't rehabilitate them, then it becomes our responsibility to make sure that they can't hurt other people, so we lock them away, right? Yeah. That's how our prison system should work. That's how our justice system should work. That's why I am so strongly opposed to the death penalty. Yeah. Um, Not just because I think it's barbaric, but because I think, you know, things like he says here that, why why would we not work to rehabilitate people instead of just fucking killing them and and what you know how does it help anybody to say you shouldn't kill people or you shouldn't do other things because if you do we'll kill you yeah, <laughs> yeah. that that's never made any sense to me either well now and and I definitely don't disagree with that argument there is a certain 
uh, uh, superiority in in humanity, and you know we we think we're better more than more yeah. special, or you know better, or and all this than than everything else, and that that we can choose, you know, we can you know that that we inherently make these decisions to do X, Y, or Z when when. We clearly don't in in a lot of cases. Well, and not just that we're better than other species, but a lot of people like to lord their morality over other people, right? Right. That, and that, that I'm a better person than you because I would never do anything like that. Yeah. But you can't tell me that if you were that if you were raised as that person, if you went through every every bit of their life, if you had the same biology, went through all of the same experiences, that when it came time, when it came down to that crucial moment when they committed that crime, that you would have done something different. You can't tell me that. Yeah. Right. That's and that's what he's arguing is that it's not it's not that people have a moral failing. It's that there's something wrong in their biology, their circumstance that has led them to doing what they've done. And that rather than just punishing them for their life circumstances that have led them to do whatever when it wasn't a conscious choice for them to do these things, that we should work to rehabilitate them to fix whatever was Whatever is the underlying issue that that led to this problem, and that's and that's what other nations have found time and time again. Yeah, uh, with with drug use, rather than making drugs illegal, you you focus on on rehabilitation. You focus on getting uh, drug treatment. You put your money into drug treatment rather than mm-hmm. incarceration, mm-hmm. and their their drug use plummeted. I I was just hearing on the radio. I'm not going to remember all the details. I'm going to feel like shit for that. But just today, the uh, a local news place was talking to the owner of a moving company where they they bring convicts. It's it's a moving company totally employed by convicts, a lot of drug users and things like that. And rather than fixing their drug problems, they fix all the other problems that that cause them to become drug users and and liars and cheats and things like that and they give them jobs and they make money and it's a totally rehabilitative environment rather than uh, rather than uh, punitive mm-hmm. and it works it works amazingly and and it's been highly successful here in Utah uh and other states this this organization i forget the name of it uh, has has these things in multiple states, and maybe we, I could look into it more. We could talk about this more in another show, but it's mm. been highly successful mm. as a rehabilitative mm-hmm. thing. Mm. And so, yeah, I I don't know why. I mean, there's the profit motive of incarceration. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot of money to be made yeah. in locking people up. Um, there there are certainly other political motivations to incarceration. Well, well I was going to say, especially in the private prison system, to have people locked up. Private prison. Pri- you know, and when you have Pretty. convicts who can no longer vote mm-hmm. and no longer have any say in the civil, you know, in, in our democracy, you know, there's, there's a certain benefit there for certain people. So, I don't know, we, we could go have a whole thing on this <laughs> but i'll drop it there no yeah I, I i like the discussion of free will because it's an interesting thing right because it's still somewhat unknown but we're learning more every day and you've got experts in the field like this guy who's a neurobiologist who can give us some hard science and, and data behind yeah. why he thinks free will is an illusion and when i posted this out on my facebook timeline uh, so i posted it on atheists of utah and godless revolution and my own timeline and just asked you know what do you think and the the response i got from most people is no yeah he's probably right it, it makes a whole lot of sense there were a few people who who i don't know i i, I would say approached it with a compatibilist view and said basically you know we 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 may not have free will but we still have to act as if we do and why yeah well that was that was the question that other people asked like well why, why do we have why to? do we have to do that and the response because given you want to i yeah well the I'm response going. given was something along the lines of well we need to punish people when they do something wrong we can't just you know say oh well they didn't have any choice and 
I mean, I get that, but they they clearly didn't actually read the article yeah. when, when, saying, when they made that comment, about, which is something else that really fucking bothers me. Like, if, if you're going to make a comment on something, read the fucking article. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, clearly they didn't read the article to see that he did actually address that and say, you know, if you're if the brakes on your car go out, you don't say that the car has a moral failing. You try to fix the brakes, and if you can't, you you put it away mm-hmm. and make sure that it can't harm anybody else. So I don't know. It's a fun discussion for me. It's or you crush it. I like to have <laughs> I like to have those kinds of discussions with people. Um, I was interviewed yesterday by a, by a college student who is working in a film class, I believe. Okay. And had to do uh, some kind of online or some kind of interview with a person (laughs) about something they're interested in celebrity. And so she, uh, so apparently, so her, her initial contact to me was that she's an atheist, but you know, has never like hung out with other atheists. It's not something she really talks about. Yeah. She's, she's never gone to any atheist of Utah functions. Doesn't really know that there's a community here or anything. And, that it just struck her, you know, it, it made her think, oh, I'm an atheist. It's something I'm kind of interested in and that probably nobody else will be talking about in this class. So I'll, I'll do a Google search for atheists in Utah. <laughs> and she found, uh, an old article of me, apparent, that, that, that mentioned my name from okay. 2014 when the, American Atheists Convention was here in Utah. Oh, that was 2014. And David Silverman came yeah. out and uh, Atheists of Utah organized a mass resignation mm-hmm. Oh yeah, from yeah. the LDS Church. And I had David come out and speak and I spoke for a little while. And you and held an umbrella. We mar- Yeah, I held the umbrella <laughs> for him when, umbrella. when he was giving his speech. We marched around Temple Square and, and they a, were and they were all singing. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they were all a, lined up, ready for us. They had a bunch of Mormons lined up on the sidewalk outside singing. the temple. weren't they? Were they, they set up? They set up a corridor of love. A wow. corridor so of love. They lined either were, side of this like ten foot wide sidewalk yeah. with everybody holding their hymnals and singing. They, they were singing, yeah. and I don't know how many know people were standing singing, out there singing and just crying. <laughs> As we walked past them around the temple square to deliver everybody's resignation letters. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was interesting. But anyway, she found this article in Al Jazeera that wow. mentioned me. Al Jazeera. And pictures. Like, I didn't even know this thing existed. Oh my God. <laughs> but that's, but that's where she found my name and, uh, contacted me and said she wanted to do an interview. So she came over last night and did like a, I don't know, I think she was here for like an hour and a half doing an on-camera interview, just asking me questions about, uh, you know, the history of atheism, the history of atheism here in Utah, why anybody would join a social group, why a, why a group exists at all, what atheists believe, how we handle different things. And one of the questions she asked that I'm really happy she asked was something along the lines of, you know, when you when you talk to a believer and they want to engage you in a theological discussion, you know, do you hate those kinds of discussions? Do you just roll your eyes and think that they're dumb and whatever? And I said, no, not at all. You know, I, I love having theological discussions. Oh, so with do people. I, yeah. I said, with the exception that if I'm going to have a conversation with somebody, if, if they really want to talk theology with me as a believer, I'm not at all interested in somebody who just wants to preach at me or mm-hmm. proselytize. Yeah. If they if they're interested in having a discussion to find out why I believe what I believe and to and to possibly examine if their own beliefs are true and correct, I fucking love having those kinds of discussions with somebody who's a true believer but is open-minded enough to sit down and talk with an atheist about what they believe and why and then to defend their own beliefs and try to explain to me why they believe what they believe. I fucking love that. Yeah. Mm. Those are some of my favorite conversations, but they're pretty rare. <laughs> they, yeah. they don't happen a whole lot. And I said, you know, so I, I, I love having those conversations, but I'm not at all interested in having a conversation where somebody is set in their ways that they're not at all open to the possibility that they could be wrong about their beliefs. Because that's just a waste of my fucking time. It's a waste of their time because yeah. I didn't come to my beliefs through not examining them, through not studying the, mater- the material that's out there, through through not looking at other religions. 
It's because I did study all of these other religions. It's because I did study the religion I was born in. It's not like I have, you know, always maintained that, you know, there is no God. There was a time when I didn't really know either way, that I went to church, that I was at least uh, moderately practicing and believing Mormon. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's not through just being lazy that I came to my position. I've done a shit ton of research and a lot of homework and a lot of searching. You know, it, it's something that I'm interested in and I want to make sure that my beliefs are true and correct. And I said, it's really frustrating to have a conversation with somebody who's religious, who's not at all interested in those kinds of things and just wants to proselytize. And well, and that's why most of the door to door, uh, missionaries are right both jehovah's witnesses and and you know mormons are the two prominent door-to-door ones Mm -hmm. and and most of the ones that come to my door you know it's a it's a one-way conversation they they have this month's speech that they've got their script and they've got their script and their associated watchtower or you know whatever document they have yeah very rarely do they want to have a conversation yeah a couple of times i've been able to engage them uh, you know, there's that Jehovah's Witness story I about the mm-hmm. women, and you know, oh, yeah, yeah. we conversed a little bit. Yeah, but yeah, usually it's just very one way. Well, and I told her too that one of the most frustrating and silly things to me is that there seem to be an abundant number of Christians out there who think that atheists have just never heard of Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. like, like they think that we just have no idea who Jesus is or, yeah. re- or what religion is. And that if they could only tell us yeah. who Jesus is and why we should have a personal relationship with him, that we, that our minds will suddenly be changed. And I'm like, most of the atheists I know were previously religious or that we hate God. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's the other thing. Either yeah. we, either we we are like, Africans who who have never heard of Christianity, yeah, or or we had some bad experience in the church, and now we hate the church, and so we're claiming to be atheists. Yeah, I yeah, do and- know I hate leprechauns though. <laughs> Fuck them. What's, Why? What's wrong with leprechauns? And what have you got wrong with the leprechauns? They fucking hoard all the gold. Do us. <laughs> That's their job. You're pissed well, at somebody for, for doing their job. So, so, do you have an issue can, with little people? I mean, what what, what, what is it? I love little people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can bowl with them. You can throw them. <laughs> oh my God. I don't have gold. I have lucky charms. <laughs> this is New Name Noah, and you're listening to the Godless Revolution. Dear eight pound, six ounce, newborn infant Jesus. Don't even know a word yet. Just a little infant, so cuddly, mm. but still omnipotent. Mm. We just thank you for all the races I've won and the $21.2 million. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money! If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! Uh, we have one final story this evening that I wanted to talk about. This is uh, a yes. 12-year-old Mormon girl who came out as gay in front of her entire church. Which takes incredible up amounts of courage. Courage. Yeah, well, like, balls, especially but... <laughs> when you're talking the Mormon church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, coming out in the Episcopal church, no big deal. I mean, they're, they're like, you know, two thumbs up and, you know, for Episcopalians, but. So I believe it's once a month Mormons have a fast and testimony meeting during sacrament where it's you, you fast throughout the day on Sunday <laughs> and you can get up during sacrament meeting and bear your testimony about why you believe the church is true. And apparently... And then you cry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is up with... I've never... I've been to... I'm not I'm Mormon. I'm just so overcome I've been with emotion. To, They're been God to, tears. I've been to years of, of Mormon uh, uh, meetings, but I'm not Mormon. But yeah, the, the testimony meetings... And everyone breaks down crying, except for kids. Kids never do it. Well, but they don't every, even know what to say. They're spoofing. They're just reading off a fucking yeah. paper that their parents typed up. 
I know, Joseph. But every was a adult who, uh, oh my God, they break down crying. I don't get that kind of d- every single fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of it is it's, probably nerves, and you know, it's a public speaking thing, so I, they're they're a little I nervous. Yes, they're overcome but. with the spirit. You do it every month. You should get fucking used to it. Well, not every, I mean, not everybody in the congregation gives okay. it. It's, you know, whoever wants to saunter up to the microphone and bear but their testimony. Seriously, every single person has such a deep love of Jesus Christ that, that it brings them to tears to tell, well, them, tell everyone how much they love him. Sometimes Jesus I, touches you deep inside. I, okay. <laughs> I I want to be deep throated by Jesus. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> But this was this was a 12-year-old girl yeah. who decided to come out as gay in front of her entire congregation. Uh her name is Savannah. We don't have a last name for her. I believe that this was put out initially by our friend new name Noah or Mike Norton who's been a guest on the show. I think yeah. he was the one who initially released this. And then the LDS church, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what happened, but he posted that through some, loophole. some legal loophole, the LDS church had had his video taken down from YouTube, but it was still available on Facebook and a few other locations. Yeah. And now it's been mirrored all over all, YouTube. Yeah. So, well, and cnn and all the news sites and oh yeah and now it's now it's gone global yeah it, it's no longer just a little regional story here or even a story among the mormon community or ex-mormons it's so it went statewide and now nation and then nationwide yeah. and now global lds church don't have the power they thought they did but i think i, I thought this was really interesting they've yeah. never had the power they thought they did <laughs> true <laughs> i mean come on well it's about a four and a half minute video um We'll we'll provide commentary throughout just to kind of explain what's going on in the church and how things happen. And this happened somewhere in Utah at an unspecified ward on May 7th of this year. Hi, my name is Savannah, and I want to share my testimony with you. So you'll notice immediately that it's the sound isn't great. But it's because it looks like it's being recorded surreptitiously. Surreptitiously. Yeah. It's a cell phone, Secretly. cell phone video. Yeah, shot over the shoulder of a couple other, the shoulders of a couple other people. And there's so, some people that wanted to have fucking kids in their life, so they brought them there, and they're all making noise. And shit. <laughs> yeah, Mormons. Mormons are lousy with kids all the time. Fuck. Like just filthy with kids everywhere. Yeah. And so are their churches, and so it's always babies crying and toddlers mumbling and screaming, but. The way a, an LDS church is set up, at least the the area where they hold sacrament meeting, is you've got, you know, like most churches, a series of pews where people sit. Unlike a lot of other churches, they have a bit of a stage. Uh, it's usually two or three steps that you walk up. And a lot, I know a lot of other churches do have stages so that the pastor or clergy person, whoever it may be, can be heard and seen more easily by the crowd. The thing that I've noticed about Mormon churches, though, is that not only is it raised, but there's like a wall. There's a there's a short two to three foot wall, except for the stairs leading up to this area, yeah. where they have chairs where the bishop and first and second counselor, treasurer, whoever else is in the bishopric, uh, or who may be giving a talk that day, will will sit up there, and they've got a podium that raises and lowers with a microphone. It's kind of fancy stuff. And it's but also not, it, but it's also not ornate. No, the way it's like very a Catholic plain. Or, yeah. or Episcopal church might be. Yeah, there's there's not there, a gold. There's, there's not a new, bunch of gold new, shit everywhere. Yeah. There's yeah, there's no ornate decorations. It's all just pretty it's much just kind of a plain wood, wood yeah. plain wood kind of. Usually, thing. kind of an oak. Yeah, look for everything. Did I ever tell you I was a primary bouncer? No, <laughs> I'll have to tell you that story sometime. <laughs> okay, remind me after this. Okay. I believe I'm in a child of heavenly parents. I don't know if they talk to us, but I feel in my heart that they made me, and they they love me. I believe I was made the way I am, all parts of me, by my heavenly parents. So the LDS Church, uh, their their theological teachings are that everybody exists, everybody, 
well, it's kind of a long story. To make it as short as possible, God lives on another planet and has several spiritual wives with whom he has sex to birth spirit babies who are then They're just pumping them out. Yeah. Yep. Who who all live in the pre existence and are just waiting to be born to earthly parents here wherever Mormons may be <laughs> may be pumping out kids. So so they, they teach this this belief that you have heavenly parents also while you're in the pre existence. Just think of a bad sci fi movie. <laughs> yeah. So she's saying that she knows her heavenly parents love her. They did not mess up when they gave me brown eyes or when I was born bald. They did not mess up when they gave me brown eyes or when I was born bald. They did not mess up when they gave me freckles or when they made me to be gay. They did not mess up when they gave me freckles or when they made me to be gay. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Somebody, anybody getting up and saying that in an LDS church, let alone a 12-year-old girl wow i'm wondering if everybody else in that congregation is going did she just say what yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, again going back to a previous discussion there's a certain shock factor here wait a minute did she just say what i think she said <laughs> yeah i think i think there's definitely a period here where everybody's just kind of like wait well, wait a minute wait what? wait huh? she just said she got freckles i don't see no freckles well let let her continue because i think she might have said she was gay but maybe she just meant happy okay <laughs> God loves me just this way because I believe that he loves all his creations. I do not believe he made me, I do believe, sorry. I do believe he made me this way on purpose. No part of me is a mistake. I do not choose to be this way and it is not a fact. I cannot make someone else gay and being around me won't make anyone else this way. I believe that God wants us to treat each other with kindness even if people are different, especially if they are different. Christ showed us this. I believe that we should just love. I believe I am good. I try my best to be nice to each other and stick up for those that are hurting. I know I'm not a horrible sinner for being who I am. I believe God would tell me if I was wrong. And she's reading from a notebook of prepared statement she yeah. she hand wrote out what she yeah. wanted to this was to say this during very her well prepared yeah and and notice notice all the kids in the background are screaming and crying they don't give a shit that she's gay. No. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> you have two fucks <laughs> yeah i don't even have any clue what's I going want on my cookies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well and you can see at this point as she's now said it a couple times and is now talking about other things that the two people in front whose, whose shoulders the video was shot over are now kind of whispering to each other and they're shifting in their seat a little bit, looking a little uncomfortable and the yeah. camera zooms in on her a little bit. Well, and the, and the priesthood is, is sitting to her left. left. Yeah. yeah. And, and at a certain point, I'm not sure if it's happened yet, but you know, they're going to start yeah. kind of whispering yeah. to each other. Yeah. Tell me if I was wrong. I hope someday to go on dates, go to school dances, hold hands, and to go out to college. I hope to find a partner and have a great job. I hope to get married and have a family. I know these dreams and wishes are good and right. I know I can have all of these things as a, as a lesbian. <laughs> Oh, she said the L word. Oh, she would. God. She didn't oh. mean happy. Oh, no. She didn't mean she happy. She definitely Red doesn't alert. mean happy. Red alert. Red alert. Red alert. <laughs> Red alert. <laughs> things as a, as a lesbian and be happy. I believe that if God is there, he knows I am perfect just the way I am. And, never and you'll notice there's a slight, there's a subtle shift there, right? Where she says, I believe that if God is there, he knows I am perfect yeah. just the way I am. So she that's, started. Uh, that's, I mean, that's interesting. Though. Yeah. I, yeah. And actually, I just noticed that. I've watched I this video a few different before, times, yeah. but I just noticed that now. That, that if. That, you know, throughout the whole thing, she's talking about, I know my heavenly yeah. parents love me, blah, blah. And now she's saying, if God is there, he knows I am perfect just the way I am. I, I wonder if that was intentional or, yeah, or I don't just know. a mistake. I she know. did write it out. I mean, you know, if, if she's questioning whether, you know, the LDS church is even true or God even exists, then, then why bother doing this to begin with? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she, she, well, we can, we can talk about that we a can, little bit yeah, more after. No, but, we can. Yeah. yeah. Emma never asked me to live my life alone or with someone I'm not attracted to. 
He would want me to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to love myself and not feel ashamed for being me. I ask you to... And at this point, somebody like tugs on her skirt, and it's it's one of the priesthood members yeah. who are sitting there next to her. When the microphone has been shut off. Yeah. She continued talking, but the microphone was shut off. He's saying, can so, you sit down? Yeah. Yeah. The Whoever in the priesthood is asking, can you sit down? And yeah, they, that's when they did shut off her microphone. Okay. Yeah. So but, she just. But now they sit there for a good like 30, 40 seconds, like, what the fuck do we do? Yeah. <laughs> so she gathers her notes and, Damage and walks away, walks away from the podium. And the second counselor and whoever else is sitting next to him are just kind of mumbling to each other, whispering back and forth. Yeah, because they, they don't know how to handle this right now. Yeah. Oh, shit, what are we going to do? We just forced a 12-year-old little girl to go sit down and not bear her testimony. Now yeah. what the fuck do we do? Like we should have stopped the first time she said gay. <laughs> I told you she said gay. Brothers and sisters, I I also want to recognize that we are all children of God. We are loved to our Heavenly Father. And I have no doubt the Heavenly Father has made us all unique in different ways. And for that I am grateful. But but we're not all welcome to speak our minds. Yeah. yeah. In God's church. Especially a woman. Especially a in woman. The LDS a church. lesbian woman. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm grateful for all of you who are here today, the sons and daughters of God. We thank you all very much. We're grateful for Heavenly Father's plan for us. And I say this in Jesus Christ's name. But maybe Heavenly Father's plan was to send a 12 year old girl up there and, and speak her testimony about being a fucking lesbian. And, and so it, you're uh, interfering with it, you yeah. with your God's plan. Yeah. And if it wasn't his plan, then why didn't God stop it? Why did you have to do something? Exactly. About it? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty much the end right there. Yeah, that's when the video fades out and there's text that pops up and says the first counselor in the stake presidency was presiding. He chose to shut off twelve year old Savannah's mic and told her to sit down. This is Savannah reading the rest of her testimony. And I feel shame for my for being me. I ask that you all pay close attention to what you say. You never know who is listening. I had dreams of going to the temple and getting married, and I was very sad when I found out that would never happen for me. And today I, I choose. So what she's talking about there is having a Mormon temple wedding, which is a super secret, sacred ceremony. You can see it online. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's yeah. Mike's whole deal. Is yeah. he he goes into Mormon temples and records their super secret sacred <laughs> ceremonies. <laughs> but but a, a temple wedding is different than a temporal wedding Which, that that most regular people have. Yeah, they don't get real married in a temple wedding. You go through all of these bizarre rituals, and you are sealed together for time, time and, and eternity. eternity. And Fuck unless eternity. unless you are worthy enough and have a temple recommend, you cannot enter the temple, which means that a lot of family members don't get to see uh, their other family members get married in the temple. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I'm going through with my daughter. Yeah, I, would, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it or not. Uh, no, I, I, well, I mean, the, you know, the wedding is postponed for now. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, eventually that's what's going to happen if she marries a guy. Yeah. I'm yeah they're they're going to have a temple wedding and the one thing I have always wanted which is to walk my daughter down the aisle uh I won't get to do. I'll yeah. get to do it a secondary ceremony after the fact. Yeah. A ring ceremony which they do a lot of Mormons do for to placate people like the concerns me, of, placate of the people who are not members. worthy to enter the temple. But yeah, I mean it's it's all superficial. It's I mean cuz they're married. Yeah. at that point. They well, and, and here's what the LDS church does. They could get married first and do the temple wedding, temple marriage second. That that's perfectly valid to do in the LDS church. And and the LDS allow that because the LDS converts existing married people, so they have to allow them the ability to have to, a temple yeah. wedding. 
So, so they can do that. But they hate the idea of young couples getting married first and temple wedding second. They want the Because they're going to be doing first. some fucking first. Right. <laughs> even if they do it on even if they do it on the same day. Yeah. It it doesn't matter. The LDS want to be first. So the church a, a number of years ago put in a restriction saying if you get married first, you have to wait a year before you can do your If you have a regular a, a temporal temple, ceremony before you can go your before, before you, you can, can do your, your temple sealing right. as a way to discourage people from getting married first so that Fathers like me can go to their daughter's wedding. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's just another level of control. Yeah. So, yeah. And this is this is the ceremony in which they're given their special names. Uh, the the because I think I've mentioned it on the show before that Mormon women cannot enter. M- Mormons have three different levels of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> the top, the topmost being the celestial kingdom, gold, silver, and bronze. <laughs> like I said, bad sci-fi movie. <laughs> and you, and you can't get into gold heaven or the celestial kingdom uh, as a woman unless your husband calls you to his side using the super secret name he learned in your super secret <laughs> ceremony. And if he calls you to him, you have no choice but to go. That's the other thing. Like women can't get there by themselves. And if your husband calls you, if, because he doesn't have to. If, if yeah, he, he doesn't have to. If he chooses to call you to his side, you have to go. And it's something that is lorded over the heads of LDS women throughout their marriages. They have to be subservient to their husband and don't want to piss him off, because if they do, he may choose to not call them to him in the afterlife so that they may sit in eternal glory at God's right hand in the celestial kingdom. Well. And she might be stuck down in the telestial. In a kingdom, lower level of heaven, yes. With her husband and her kids. Her kids will, you know, her sons at the very least will be in the celestial kingdom. Yeah. So it's something that a lot of LDS women fret over their entire lives and are terrified of doing anything to piss off their husband because they may not get into gold yeah. heaven. One, and one other thing to note on this is, is so the, although, Gay marriage is uh, same sex marriage is legal uh, nationally. Mm-hmm. The LDS are not required to allow same sex marriage. Correct. No, yeah. no religion it's is required, required to, yeah. to right. You know, uh, state you know uh, clerks and things like that and judges and you know legal ceremonies need to allow it, but no religion is required to. They're exempt from. The, yeah, the, which is I, I think is fine. That's fine by and me, and that's fine. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. But that's one of the things she's getting at is that you know, that she'll never, at least for a long time, it's going to take the LDS temple. a long time. Yeah, un- until and unless the LDS Church changes its stance on which that, they're that not she going would never to be able to soon. participate in a in a temple ceremony. Yeah. Right. Choose to find my joy outside of my old dreams from when I was little. I have new dreams and know my earthly parents and heavenly parents love and accept me just the way I am. Amen. Yeah. So that was to be the end of, or the rest of the testimony that she was going to give before she her mic was turned off. Told to sit down. Yeah. Can you please sit down? But what a what a brave, courageous young oh, woman, yeah. man. That's Oh, yeah, no doubt. What was the story you were going to tell me? <laughs> so, in in brief, when when I was in Germany, uh, and my my ex wife, my wife at the time, started going back to a church because she didn't have any friends in Germany, and there was an American German war there. Uh, I wasn't atheist at the time, but I wasn't religious. Yeah. But she was going, and my daughter was going, and um, I had nothing better to do, so I tagged along. And and so the, and that's where I went to the LDS church a whole bunch. And now I got to tell you, LDS outside of Utah, very different from LDS in Utah. Oh, yeah. Um, but so I would go. I'd go to the sacrament meeting, all that. And then my wife would go off to uh, um, Relief Society. My daughter would go off to primary. I'm not Mormon. I don't believe in this shit. I'm not going to go to priesthood, even though I, I probably could. But I just had no interest, so I, I tagged along to primary with my daughter. I just kind of hung out in the back of the room and listened. 
and you know it was just kind of fun after a while the kids got to know me and you know everyone kind of knew me i mean i was the fucking gold ring you know i was the (laughs) non-mormon who attended every fucking week and if they could convert me you know i mean it's like it's like the gold ring the brass ring or the brass ring um so but after a while, the kids got to know me. The parents got, and eh, everyone liked me. I, you know, I got along. And the kids would get, kind of get out of control in primary a lot. And I'm just kind of hanging around. I want to be helpful. So when one of the kids gets a little rowdy, gets a little out of control, you know, Grant I, just I, puts him in a headlock. <laughs> I, I would go in. I, 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 I kind of take, you know, point to a kid and we kind of go out in the hall and have a little talk about having having a little respect <laughs> let's have a little respect and let's <laughs> let's calm down you don't need to be so loud that's a nice suit you're wearing shame if it got blood on it <laughs> so, <laughs> and then you know i'd calm the kid down and we'd go back in and you know so i'd save the teachers from having to do it you'd put the fear of grant in them <laughs> so i i became I became known as a primary bouncer because I would stand in the back of the room with my arms crossed, waiting for a kid to, to well, they hadn't act been out. Terrified of you. I and, mean, you're not a small man. No. How tall are you? I'm six foot four. I mean, I wasn't as <laughs> as I'm a lot heavier now. I mean, I was like one eighty, you know, one ninety back then. So I was scrawny as shit. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I was still six foot four. But I mean, they all liked me. It's not like they were f- afraid of me. But the primary bouncer was more of a just a funny thing. They they weren't afraid of me, or at least I don't think they were. I mean, they later on in in that this whole episode, I'm one of the only I'm really the only non Mormon I know of that's actually held a calling. the The same ward gave me a calling as a Boy Scout leader because in the American German ward. Yeah, I mean, you know how many goddamn callings they have in any war. Oh, yeah. And with a small number of Americans there, they every, ran out of Mormons. every adult had like three, four callings. And they ran out of callings. So the bishop and his wife pulled me in and my wife in, into the side room. And, you know, the God had given him a good feeling about making me a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> and through I, his power of discernment. I went through the whole, what, what's that ceremony thing where you all vote on what God wants? The sustaining. Sustainment? Yeah, yeah. Sustaining? Yeah, it's, it's, it's something in sustaining well, so, decisions. Yeah. So God calls you to a calling. Yeah. But then you have to stand up before the congregation and everyone votes. Sort of. They all just agree. I mean, they're... Well, okay. It seems like voting to me. I'm like, well, wait a minute. So God wants me to do this, but you're voting on whether or not... You should do it. Whether... It's it's more just... It's another way of controlling people. It's, I, it's, another, way, it's another way of getting them to confirm... But what if, what if they don't? That it doesn't happen. It's, it's just another way of getting so them... So it's a vote. Not really, though. I mean, but they, if they don't sustain you, oh no, I'm saying that that it doesn't happen that they don't sustain you. Like that doesn't. Oh, happen. okay, yeah. Like it's it's just another way of of <laughs> exercising a bit of control over the congregation okay. to have them all confirm. You know, it, it's, it's just another head nodding thing that yeah. you're going to do what we tell you to do. This is what God is saying. Yeah, you all need to say yes. So it's just like nobody says no to Putin. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my uh that's that's my primary bouncer history. Well, that wraps it up for tonight's show as far as the regular portion of the show. We're going to move into the Patreon section of the show where Ryan is going to tell us all about Oh yeah. His the, the Illuminati scam. His recent excursions into wait, the wait, into the wait, secretive wait, world of the Illuminati. Yes. Oh shit. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. So all of our Patreon supporters will be hearing that. If you would like to hear it, you can go out to patreon.com slash godless revolution and sign up for as little as a dollar as an epi- as little as a dollar per episode and do that. Um, Steven Andrus gets to hear it. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Lucky Steven. <laughs> uh, next week, we will have Megan Kennedy in studio with us. Uh, ah, she yeah. is the one who uh, we, we published during yeah. one of our weeks off. We published the talk that she yeah, gave. Two, three weeks ago? Yeah, for the Satanic Temple about the uh, Mormon, or the Mormon, the, <laughs> the Mountain Meadows Massacre. 
that was oh. carried out by the Mormons. Yeah. Interestingly, I you when I went to through. California, I yeah, yeah, Tracy and I stopped <laughs> by all of the different monuments at Mountain Meadows site and took a bunch of pictures and video that I've I've posted some of the pictures. I'll post some of the video when I get around to when I get around to doing so. <laughs> My time is kind of limited right now. But we'll move into that. We'll have Megan in studio with us next week and we're going to talk about a bunch of different things, but yeah, I'm excited to have her here. Yeah. Should be a lot cool. of fun. So until next week, thank you all very much for listening. Crucify that like button. Leave a review to achieve nirvana. And don't forget to do something towards Mecca five times a day. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody.